Your church is likely preaching something. The question is, are they preaching faithfully? Are they understanding the text? Are they explaining the text? Are they letting God's word declare what is uh, the message? Or are they coming with their own message and utilizing scripture for their purposes? That's what you need to really consider. Okay. to evaluate as well, are you in a biblical church? And, and how can you get yourself to a biblical church? Uh, so the first mark that they had was uh, was this here, uh, preaching. Okay, uh, so uh, in a biblical church, you'll find uh, preaching uh, ex called ex expository preaching, uh, where an, an expositional sermon, as they said here, I took their quote, an expositional sermon takes the main point of a passage in of Scripture and makes it the main point of the sermon and applies it to life today. That sounds over easy or super simple, uh, of course, obvious, but you would be surprised again, depending where you go, you won't find this in, in every church. Uh, there's preaching. There's always some kind of preaching. Even atheists are preaching and transgender people are preaching stuff. Everyone's preaching a message all over the place. But uh, are we preaching the word of God truly is the question that needs to be addressed. And uh, a healthy mark uh, of a church, a biblical church, number one that they list is expositional preaching, expository preaching. And a classic example for, uh, uh, is when uh, you have preachers, uh, they come with a preconceived idea, a message of their own that they want to deliver, and so what do they do? They grab their Bible and they start finding verses here, finding verses there. They take all kinds of verses out of its context, not even considering who wrote it, who they were writing it to, why they wrote it, how that fits in the bigger picture of the redemptive story of God from beginning to end of Scripture, how it points to the gospel, the true gospel, the real gospel, how it points us to Jesus Christ. Uh, they, they miss all that, and they're just picking verses here and there, cherry-picking and putting something together, their own message. They're preaching. That's happening. It's uh, They have a Bible. That's happening, too. But are they preaching faithfully? Often, they're not. A classic example comes to mind. You, you hear the verse where two or three are gathered together. There Jesus is. He's in your midst. Matthew chapter 18, right? And so I use that as an example because Jesus is present everywhere. He's omnipresent. God is omnipresent. You can't go anywhere where Jesus is not. He's present. The Lord is present all over the place. This is his world, okay? And uh, so you can be two or three people gathered together. He, of course he's present. He's present everywhere, right? He's, he's omnipresent. Uh, but w when we read that, what was actually happening was a case of church discipline, right? Which is a topic we'll get into in just a moment. Most people, unfortunately, don't have a good solid understanding of what that is and why it's important and why Jesus gave us that, that thing called church discipline and how we're to walk that out, etc. Where if a brother is in sin, we, we go and we, we, we find the courage to, 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 to love him enough to talk about it and to confront him and ask questions and see what's going on. Maybe we misunderstood. Okay. And if he acknowledges his sin and repents, you won your brother back. If he says, no, no, I'm fine. Leave me alone. Then two of you are to go, Jesus said, and you talk to him, two or three, and you say, hey, uh, it seems like you're living in sin. What we see here is not good, and you're continuing in that. Uh, it's not good. It's a bad witness. You need to repent and, and turn to Jesus Christ. You don't seem to be saved. And if he still doesn't turn, then we present it to the church, and then the church, ultimately, if he won't listen to the church, and this person continues to remain in this sin, unrepentant, then he gets put in what's called church discipline. And we see that all throughout the, test, uh, the New Testament. We'll get into that in just a moment. But the point is, the verses where two or three are gathered together, there I am with you. What Jesus was actually teaching is, listen, it's extremely hard to confront one another. Well, you guys, uh, Jesus didn't have sin, but us, to confront one another and live a godly life and, and turn from sin. When someone is in sin, it's hard, it's scary to confront them. But he assures us, when you do it, I commanded you, no, I am with you in that process. Where two or three, where you're doing that, I'm with you to help you. And he does help us. He wants his church pure. It's to be salt and light uh, in this world. Okay, so I went on a little bit of a rabbit trail, but the, the idea is there, preaching, a mark of a healthy church. Your church is likely preaching something. The question is, are they preaching faithfully? Are they understanding the text? Are they explaining the text? Are they letting God's word declare what is uh, the message? Or are they coming with their own message and utilizing scripture for their purposes? That's what you need to really consider. Again, I will send you to the link. Uh, we'll put it in the description of this uh, webinar if you wanted to check out their website or get their book and learn more about what that means. We're just hitting the surface of it. So another healthy mark. Uh, the second one that we'll mention is biblical theology. This is one that they list uh, the Nine Marks Ministry. Uh, biblical theology, uh, Biblical theology, they say, is sound doctrine. It is right thoughts about God. It is belief that accords with Scripture. Biblical theology is sound doctrine. It is right thoughts about God. It is belief that accords 
with Scripture. Okay, now, when you have someone faithfully uh, expositing the Word of God, understanding what they're, what they're reading, understanding how it fits into what God is, is saying and so on, and properly teaching and preaching the Word of God, sound doctrine flows naturally because you take uh, the whole of Scripture together. Uh, and, and, and then you, you let the Word of God guide you and you, you, have a, you have a sound foundation of theology if you're preaching the Word of God. You should anyway. And you have a systematic theology. You understand how things fit in. You have a historic theology, a biblical theology, and you understand w- what is being said and how it fits into the bigger picture. Uh, so they, they, they go hand in hand. And a lot of these marks of a healthy church, actually, they do go hand in hand. If, if someone is not uh, faithfully preaching the Word of God expositionally, what often happens, or what often goes with it, is really bad uh, theology. Okay, I, I could list so many uh, examples for that, but we'll leave it for uh, for another day. Let's just leave it at that for now. Biblical theology, another mark of a healthy church. Now, uh, maybe I will say just this. If you are going to a church, and you look at their website, for example, or you talk to their leaders, and there is no actual doctrinal statement, that's a good sign they have no biblical theology. I've been there. I've been to churches that don't have any theology. I myself, when I first got saved, was in a church that had very bad theology, uh, no theology, really no sound doctrine, no doctrinal statement, and uh, I didn't know anything. I was totally confused, and it took years for me to get properly rooted in Scripture and have a sound theology and a, and a sound doctrine foundation. It took years then to develop, um, and a lot of corrections to, to, to happen, right? But I had people who loved me enough to to instruct me, to take me under the wing, to disciple me, and so on, and teach me what it means. Uh, but if, if you go to a church, for example, that doesn't have a doctrinal statement, there's a big red flag, go somewhere else. If that's not important to them, who knows what is, but it's not God's Word. And uh, it should be the first thing you look for in a church is a sound doctrinal statement. If a church doesn't have a doctrinal statement, get out. If it has a very generic one, probably you should get out of there too. Find one that values the Word of God. Because the, the, the fact of the matter is, we're called, right, to love God, with all our heart, mind, soul, body, strength, with everything we are. And if we want to love God with all that we are, we need to know Him rightly. And to know Him rightly, we need to know His Word properly, rightly as well. If we don't know His Word well, if there is no sound doctrine, whatever comes to mind is what's being taught and shared, and sometimes it's right, sometimes it's not. But uh, easily that kind of church goes astray then because they don't even have a foundation. Okay, So another mark now of a healthy church, uh, we looked at... Uh, biblical theology, we looked at uh, preaching, biblical theology. A third one, we'll try to move quicker here to uh, make sure we keep on time, but we're doing okay. Uh, the gospel, all right? I already talked about this briefly. The central message of the kingdom of God that reveals our true need for a Savior, Jesus Christ, and it calls us, the gospel, to respond rightly by means of repentance and faith. Again, this is that central message that all Christians need to understand, but not all Christians have a healthy understanding of what it actually is. Uh, often we have a truncated understanding of what the gospel is and what it means, uh, uh, yeah, the gospel. So there's a lot that can be said there, but I'm not going to get into it now. Go to that other uh, previous webinar, or we have a short video as well, what is the gospel and what is it not. Uh, it's like an eight or nine minute video explanation. I encourage you to check that out. I'll try to put it in the link of this for whoever tunes in afterwards, uh, and you can check that out uh, there. Okay, but that's a, that's a key mark, and we already got into that a little bit when we review the Reformers' understanding of the gospel. Another one, uh, number four, uh, conversion. Uh, an understanding what God does and, wh- and, and what a man does when it comes to salvation. Uh, the truth of the matter here is that there are, in many churches, what's called false converts. Uh, they may have said yes to Jesus, a Jesus of their own imagination, uh, to a message about Jesus that sounded good and nice, and but are they actually born again? Are they actually saved? We need to understand uh, conversion, how it works, uh, and God's role in that and man's role. Some people believe that they actually chose God, not understanding that in reality, if anybody chooses Christ and says yes to Jesus, it's only because first God chose you before the foundation of the world, and that should humble you. That should put you in a right place because you understand uh, uh, the depravity of man, that you would not seek after God, you would not desire the things of God. That's what Paul said to the Romans. No one is good. No one is righteous. No one seeks after God. There is no such thing, actually, as a God-seeking person. Uh, there's a person being drawn by God the Father. That that exists, uh, and it's a sovereign work of God. He draws people in His timing, when He wants, who He wants, and in the way that He wants. Uh, but conversion is God's work. He's the one who actually causes a person 
to be born again. And when they're born again, all of a sudden they have eyes to see, ears to hear, new feelings. They hate the sin that they so loved before. They despise it with all their being now because they have a new heart. They love the Lord Jesus Christ. They love the people of God, the, 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 the church. They love the Word of God. These are uh, things that have to do with conversion. Uh, so a healthy church has a healthy understanding of what conversion is, how it works, and, and what's going on in that process.